Hello everybody. Today it is my uh, fourth lecture of the module 1 and uh, I wish to discuss the transformed techniques that is integral transform for solving the dynamic system. Especially I will focus my discussion on the linear dynamic system in which the transform technique will be suitable in various cases. So, the today's lecture will be mainly on the transform technique in vibration analysis of linear system. Let us see the today's uh, topics that I will cover. Uh, first, I will cover the Laplace transform and their properties because Laplace transform is one of the transform techniques that are frequently used in solving the dynamic problems. Secondly, I will uh, discuss about a solution of a single degree freedom model using the Laplace transform for uh, different inputs. So, two inputs I will select, uh, one of them will be a harmonic input and another is step input. Then I will discuss the other type of integral transform that is known as Fourier transform and their properties. And then I will discuss about this uh, harmonic transfer function and general time history response using the Fourier transform. So, let us first uh, state the objectives of the transform techniques. In certain cases, the equation, equation of motion represented by the differential equation is complicated. And in that case, this uh, Laplace transform or Fourier transform may be a suitable option. Because using this transformation, that is uh, you go to the Laplace domain from the transfer uh, time domain and then you will get a algebraic equation instead of differential equation. So, this is the main aim of using the transform technique that one can go to this uh, other domain but you will get a algebraic equation instead of differential equation in time domain. So, uh, the transfer function is first obtained using any uh, transform technique and that transfer function has to be inverse transformed to get the response of the actual variables. So, that is the last requirement that you need to again take the inverse transform to get the actual uh, variable response. Two such techniques are mainly used that I will discuss today. One is Laplace transform and another is Fourier transform. So, to start with let us first discuss the Laplace transform. What is Laplace transform? Laplace transform is defined as an integral that you are seeing here that integral is e to the power minus uh, st into ft dt where ft is a time function for which Laplace transform is required. So, it is integrated from 0 to infinity because this function ft is defined for the time t greater than 0. So, this integral is known as Laplace transform of this time function ft. And since it is integrated with respect to variable t, the function will be now in terms of variable s. So, this is the Laplace transform of ft. Now, if I take an example, let us take a simple example say a unit step function for which ft is equal to 1 and uh, this is defined for t equal to 0 or greater than 0. So, in that case the Laplace transform becomes uh, integral of e to the power minus st into 1 here time function is 1 of course it is a step function and uh, integration is done with respect to t. The limit of integration is 0 to infinity because the function is defined from uh, t greater than 0. Okay. So, after integrating you can see that the minus 1 by s terms comes and then it becomes multiplied by e to the power minus st. Limit of integration is shown here 0 to infinity. 
after substituting the limit we get this integral becomes 1 by s. So, Laplace transform of the function 1 that is the unit step function is 1 by s. Second example let us take a function e to the power a t. So, that is a exponential function. In that case this uh, the function uh, here uh, can represent certain type of the excitation in the dynamic model. For example, if A is a negative quantity and it is say for example, it is a blast loading. So, in that case uh, for a short duration of time this uh, function will decrease, okay? decrease and come to a halt that is it becomes 0 within a short interval of time if A is chosen as a high. Of course, the value of A should be negative. So, that type of function is generally representing a exponentially decaying uh, excitation in the dynamic model. Of course, if it is a uh, excitation which is exponentially increasing, but up to the limited time, then also this type of uh, function can be used in case of this uh, uh, modeling of the excitation. So, uh, this function exponential to the power a t is a very important function in modeling the dynamic excitation for short duration loading especially for even say for ground motion which decays very fast or even say blast loading which also decays fast but its effect remains. So, that type of um, excitation can be modeled with exponential function. So, here Laplace transform is defined as the integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t into e to the power a t. A is a finite number and uh, it may be negative also. So, here you can see when the integral is carried out it becomes e to the power minus bracket s minus a into t dt. So, as per uh, definition of the integral with a definite integral in which the limit is 0 to infinity it becomes now this uh, minus 1 by s minus a bracket e to the power minus s minus a and uh, we put the limit infinity and when we put the limit 0 it is becoming 1. So, this term is written after substituting the limit of the integral An integral is shown here that is minus 1 by s minus a e to the power minus s minus a into t and the limit of integral e have seen here 0 to infinity. Because the excitation in general may exceed uh, up to infinity, so except this the exponential model that is taken for excitation of short duration loading, the time interval may be chosen from 0 to infinity. However, depending on the short duration loading, the limit of integral can be changed. From the definition of Laplace transform, we need to replace the limit of the integral from 0 to infinity. So, after simplification, the Laplace transform of e to the power a t becomes uh, 1 by s minus a. Now, here s should be greater than a. If s is equal to a, s should not be equal to a, then this uh, the Laplace transform will not exist. Okay. Come to the third example here. Third example is a time function which is defined as t to the power n, where n is greater than 1, that is any integer. So, uh, the Laplace transform of such type of excitation is also required in some problems when the excitation is varying nonlinearly, and uh, it is, of course, uh, n is a integer greater than 1. Now, here you see from the definition of Laplace transform it is written f s equal to 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t t to the power n d t. We are integrating with respect to t. So, the integration is carried out and uh, by parts. You remember this is the product of 
two functions of t. So, we need to integrate this function which are actually the product of two time function by parts. So, first we have integrated say if we take the first uh, function as t n and second function as e to the power minus s t. So, first function and integration of the second function and we have put the limit then minus the uh, the differentiation of the first function that is done here then integral of the second function that is also done and then again uh, integration is carried out for that uh, combined function. So, after carrying out this integral and putting the limit we will get that f s equal to 0 plus n by s and within the integral we are getting t to the power n minus 1 e to the power minus s t dt. Now, it is nothing but the Laplace transform of t to the power n minus 1 and with a multiplying factor n by s. So, we get a relation that Laplace transform of t to the power n is equal to n by s Laplace transform t to the power n minus 1 for all n that is defined here is greater than 1 or equal to 1. Okay. So, which means that T n minus 1 you can write like that Laplace transform because L t to the power n is this. So, by a recurrence relationship we can write Laplace transform of t to the power n minus 1 equal to n minus 1 by s into Laplace transform of t minus n by 2 so, and so on. So, ultimately we will get a relationship general relationship. Laplace transform of t to the power n is equal to this say n by s into n minus 1 by s l to the power t n minus 2 and uh, after carrying out further decomposition we arrive at the result say Laplace transform of the time function which is uh, raised to the power n is equal to factorial n divided by s to the power n plus 1 provided s is greater than 0. So, whenever we get any uh, uh, function which is non-linearly varying or non-linearly varying or linearly varying we can use this relationship to get the Laplace transform of the excitation. Okay. Frequently we come across the harmonic function in dynamic problem and based on a harmonic input we get the output of the linear system which uh, defines a very important uh, relationship uh, between these uh, system parameters and the diving frequency and we get a um, function which is known as frequency response function and that functions is very important to understand the phenomenon of resonance. Now, here we want to uh, find out in example 4 the Laplace transform of sin a t and cos a t. Okay. So, suppose a is the frequency of excitation and sin a t is the excitation and here the amplitude is 1. Okay. Now, the integration can be done very easily if I if we convert the harmonic function into complex form. So, complex form of harmonic function is written as e to the power i a t equal to cos a t plus i sin a t. So, now you can see there are two parts one is real part and another is imaginary part. So, in the real part cosine function is there in the imaginary part sine function is there. So, now let us take the Laplace transform. So, Laplace transform of e to the power i a t is equal to Laplace transform of cos a t plus i Laplace transform of sin a t. i is the imaginary unit which is equal to root over minus 1. Now, we already obtained uh, this example 2 the Laplace transform of e to the power a t equal to 1 by s minus i a. So, we have written here say 
एस प्लस आई ए डिवाइडेड बै एस माइनस आई ए इंटू एस प्लस आई ए सो देट उइ कैन गेट ए रियल नम्बर हियर बै कम्प्लेक्स मल्टिप्लीकेशन सो हियर उइ गेट ए स्कोर प्लस ए स्कोर एंड देर उइ गेट एस प्लस आई ए सो हेन्स उइ कैन गेट एस डिवाइडेड बै ए स्कोर प्लस ए स्कोर प्लस आई ए बै ए स्कोर प्लस ए स्कोर सो कम्पेयरिंग दि रियल एंड इमेजनरि पार्ट अब दिस इक्वेशन हियर उथ दिस इक्वेशन उइ कैन इजिली डाउ से दैट लाप्लस ट्रांसफर्म अब कसाइन ए टी उल बी एस बै ए स्कोर प्लस ए स्कोर एंड लाप्लस ट्रांसफर्म अब सैन ए टी उल बी ए बै ए स्कोर प्लस ए स्कोर एस ग्रेटर दैन जिरो सो दिस फांगशन इज वेरि फ्रिकुवेंटली एप्लाइड इन डायनमिक प्रब्लेम एंड इट गिवस दि बिहेवियर अब दि सिसटेम सबजेक्टेड टू एक्साइटेशन दि एक्साइटेशन मे बी अब सिंगल फ्रिकुवेंसि और मे बी कम्बिनेशन अब डिफारेंट फ्रिकुवेंसिज इन हुईच केस दिस इंटीग्रियल उल बी नेसेसारि और दिस ट्रांसफर्म उल बी नेसेसारि ओके नाउ लेट आस सी अनदार एक्जाम्पल से हियर दि टाइम फांगशन इज डिफाइंड एज वन फर सार्टन इंटरवेल जिरो टू टी जिरो टी भेरिंग फ्रम जिरो टू टू ओके एंड देन दि टाइम फांगशन इज डिफाइंड एज टी माइनस टू हुआर टी इज ग्रेटर दैन टू ओके सो इन दैट केस बै डेफिनेशन एप्लाई दिस इंटीग्रियल इ टू दि पावर माइनस एस टी इंटू एफ टी जिरो टू इनफिनिटी सो सिंस दि इंटीग्रेशन इज टू बी कैरिड आउट उइद इन दिस लिमिट सो फार्ष्ट उ रट से दिस इंटीग्रियल जिरो टू टू एंड हुईज दि टाइम फांगशन इज वन सो इ टू दि पावर माइनस एस टी डि टी देन सेकेंड फांगशन टी माइनस टू दि लिमिट अब दि इंटीग्रियल इज टू टू इनफिनिटी एंड देन टी माइनस टू इ टू दि पावर माइनस एस टी डि टी ओके सो दिस इंटीग्रेशन हेव टू बी कैरिड आउट फ्रम दि बेसिक रूल एंड फ्रम दि फार्ष्ट इंटीग्रियल इट इज भेरि इजी टू से दैट इट इज वन बै माइनस एस इ टू दि पावर माइनस एस टी एंड इंटीग्रेशन लिमिट इज टी जिरो टू टू फर दि सेकेंड इंटीग्रियल अगेन उ हेव टू परफर्म दि इंटीग्रेशन बै पार्टस सो टेकिंग दिस एज दि फार्ष्ट फांगशन एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड फांगशन उइ कैन कैरि आउट दि इंटीग्रियल इन पार्टस सो फार्ष्ट पार्ट इज दिस टी माइनस टू इंटू वन डिवाइडेड बै माइनस एस इ टू दि पावर माइनस एस टी टी इज इक्ल टू टू एंड अपार लिमिट इज इनफिनिटी माइनस दि डेरिवेटिव अब दि फार्ष्ट फांगशन सो डेरिवेटिव इज वन एंड इंटीग्रेशन अब दि सेकेंड फांगशन सो इंटीग्रेशन अब दि सेकेंड फांगशन इज डान हियर एंड उइ गेट दिस भू सो आफ्टर सबस्टिट्यूटिंग दि लिमिट एज शोन हियर will get for the first component as 1 by minus s into e to the power minus 2s minus 1 and uh, the second component we get 1 by s 1 by minus s e to the power minus st and t varies from 2 to infinity in the lower limit as well as in the upper limit after simplifying the final result is now 1 by माइनस एस इ टू दि पावर माइनस टू एस माइनस वन प्लस वन बै स्कोर इ टू दि पावर माइनस टू एस सो एक्जाम्पल फाइव रिप्रेजेंट सार्टन क्लस अफ एक्साइटेशन इन हुईच दि एक्साइटेशन इज यूनिट फांगशन स्टेप फांगशन आप टू सार्टन इंटरवल आफ्टर दैट इट इज लिनियरलि भेरि सो दैट टाइप अफ एक्साइटेशन उल्सो एनकाउंटार इन प्रैक्टिस ओके दि डायनिक प्रब्लेम इन डिसक्रिट सिसटेम इज दैट दि एक्साइटेशन इज लिनियरलि भेरि सो दैट टाइप ऑफ एक्साइटेशन डायनमिक प्रब्लेम इन डिस्क्रिट सिसटेम जेनारे क्लसिफाइड एज ए इनिशियल भैल्यू प्रब्लेम अलदो इन कन्टिन्यूस सिसटेम दि स्पेस टाइम रिलेशनशिप इज देयर बाट उइ कन्सिडार दि इनिशियल भैल्यू प्रब्लेम फार्ष्ट बिकज इन कन्टिन्यूस सिसटेम अल्सो इट इज कस्टमारि टू कन्भार्ट दि पार्सियल डिफारेन्सियल इक्वेशन इन टू अर्डिनारि डिफारेन्सियल इक्वेशन इन टाइम कोअर्डिनेट्स and then we first solve the initial value problem to get the time coordinate and then combine with the space variable 
to get the complete response. So, here we have to know the certain properties of the uh, Laplace transform so that we can apply to the initial value problem. Ultimately, our aim is to apply the Laplace transform into initial value problem whether it is a discrete model or continuous model. In continuous model, the first step has to be done that in such a way that the equation of motion which was ordinarily in partial differential equation form to be converted into ordinary differential equation. So, let us see some properties. So, first property is linearity. So, Laplace transform of the Ft multiplied by a time constant C1 plus Laplace transform another time function Gt multiplied by a constant C2 is given as C1 into L Ft. L represents the Laplace transform operator plus C2 L G T. First derivative of a function if I take the Laplace transform of that function then it becomes a S L F T minus F evaluated at condition t is equal to 0. So, this is the first derivative of the time function uh, that gives the Laplace transform. Okay. Second derivative of the time function when it is transformed in the Laplace domain gives S square Laplace transform of the original time function minus S the function evaluated at 0 minus the derivative of the function evaluated at 0. Similarly, we can also write a relationship between the Laplace transform and the given initial conditions and the higher derivative. Generally, our dynamic problems are second order because we are dealing up to the acceleration uh, inertia force that is uh, consisting of the second uh, derivative terms and then our damping force which consists of first derivative and the uh, this other term that remains with the stiffness uh, the spring force that is with the uh, linear if we uh, consider the linear properties of the spring force then it is linearly varying. So, these three rules that is 1 to 3 are mainly used in our ordinary dynamic problem which is represented by the second order ordinary differential equation. But sometimes if higher derivative appears, higher order derivative appears, then also we get the relationship of Laplace transform as the nth order derivative that if I want to convert in the Laplace domain, then it is equal to s to the power n Laplace transform of the original time function minus s to the power n minus 1 then function at t is equal to 0 minus s n minus 2 derivative of the function at t is equal to 0 and so on and, uh, e and it will end at f derivative of the n, at, uh, n minus 1 derivative of the function evaluated at 0. So, this is the general relationship for any order time derivative. From that also you can derive the second order derivative. Now, fifth rule is that uh, the Laplace transform of a time function multiplied by a linear uh, time varying function say minus t into f t it is given as the first derivative of the Laplace transform. So, where f s is the Laplace transform of the original time derivative f t. This also implies that L T f t equal to minus first derivative of the function. So, first derivative of the Laplace transform. So, the if a Laplace transform is to be found for a time function which is multiplied by a linear function, then if we know the first uh, Laplace transform of the original time function, first derivative of the Laplace transform of the original function will give the Laplace transform of t into f t. So, now the Laplace transform of e to the power a t into f t. So, this is the property 6 uh, property 
that is given as the Laplace transform of this function which is nothing but the Laplace transform of the original time function but index have to be changed with s minus a. So, previously it was s Laplace transform of the original time function f t is f s. Now, because of e to the power a t into f t the Laplace transform of this combined function will be given by the Laplace transform of the original time function where the index t has to be replaced by s minus a. A is the exponent here you can see and it is replaced by s minus a. This implies that e to the power a t f t equal to inverse transform of the this derivative of the function where this index is s minus a. Okay. Some basic Laplace transform pairs are needed for solving the dynamic problem and these are given here. Any function of time x t will be transformed in the Laplace domain with capital X and index is s because t is replaced by s. Now, if uh, direct delta t which is the unit impulse, the Laplace transform of the unit impulse is 1. Similarly, Laplace transform of the unit impulse which is located at t is equal to a is given by e to the power minus a s. Laplace transform of unit step function is 1 by s and this is a linearly varying function monotonically increasing. It is called a ram function and Laplace transform of ram function is 1 by s square. Laplace transform of e to the power minus a t is given by 1 divided by s plus a. Laplace transform of the harmonic function sin omega t will be given by omega divided by s square plus omega square. Remember that omega is the driving frequency if it represents a harmonic excitation. Similarly, if harmonic excitation is represented by cosine function, then Laplace transform is given by s divided by s square plus omega square. Laplace transform of this e to the power minus a t sin omega t is given by omega divided by s plus a whole square plus omega square. Laplace transform of e to the power minus a t cos omega t is similarly given as s plus a divided by s plus a square plus omega square. Now, once the table is found or from the basic integral rule it is obtained, then when we solve the dynamic problem, we convert the time function to the another function, time function differential equation to a another function which is algebraic equation, but variable is changed to s. So, to get back the original uh, variable, we need to do the inverse transform. So, this table will help to get the inverse transform when you go to the Laplace domain. Okay. Similarly, other functions are also noted here e to the power minus a t f t that is the Laplace transform will be f s minus a then t into e to the power minus a t. Laplace transform will be 1 by s plus a whole square. Then this type of function sometimes uh, may be there in modeling and excitation. So, here e to the power minus a t minus e to the power minus b t divided by b minus a. So, 1 by s plus a into s plus b. Then this is another function f t minus a into u t minus a that Laplace transform is given by e to the power minus a s f s. This is very popular integral you know it this is the convolution integral or Duhamel integral that we discussed in the earlier class. Laplace transform of this uh, function is x s into h s. So, this is very important property. Uh, you can see here if the Laplace transform of the two functions are multiplied, then we can evaluate this inverse transform by this convolution integral or Duhamel's integral. Similarly, Laplace transform of this 1 by omega d e to the power minus 
जाय ओमेगा एन टी साइन ओमेगा डी टी जाय लेस देन वन सो दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स ए इम्पालस रेसपन्स फांगशन फर ए डैम्पड ओसिलेटर एंड हुआर ओमेगा डे इज द डैम्पड नेचारे फ्रिकुएन्सि एंड इट यू नो दैट डैम्पड नेचारे फ्रिकुएन्सि इज रूट ओवर वन माइनस जाय स्कोर इन टू ओमेगा एन ओके सो दैट टाइप अफ फांगशन हुएन इट इज ट्रांसफर्म इन टू लाप्लस डोमेन इट गिवस ए रिजल्ट हुईच इज इक्ल टू वन डिवाइडेड ब ए स्कोर प्लस टू जाय ओमेगा एन एस प्लस ओमेगा एन स्कोर ओके बिकज हियर ओमेगा डे इज कनभार्टेड इन टू दिस ओमेगा एन इन टू रूट ओवर वन माइनस जाय स्कोर ओके सीमिलारलि फर दैट फांगशन इफ दि फेस एंगुल इज इनवल्व देन इट इज गिवेन एस दिस माइनस ओमेगा एन by omega d e to the power minus omega n t sin omega d t minus phi where phi is the phase angle okay so sometimes phase angle is also uh, included here and uh, there you will find that it is equal to here equal sign will be there equal to s divided by s square plus 2 j omega n s plus omega n square the definition of omega d that is the damp natural frequency is given here and definition of phi that is cos and uh, this phase angle is also given here okay. so we discussed the convolution integral earlier also and here also in laplace domain if the product of two functions which are in the laplace domain is given then we can find the inverse transform by carrying out the convolution integral so here corresponding to f1 the time function is f1 tau and corresponding to f f2 the time function is f2 t minus tau dt d tau so this integral is carried out and uh, we can now obtain this laplace transform of this function so let us see one example that will clarify the application of laplace transform in dynamic problem okay one example is here we have taken a damped system x double dot plus 2 j omega n x dot plus omega n square x equal to f t by m with initial conditions given as x at t is equal to 0 is 0 and the initial velocity also at t is equal to 0 is 0 that means the system was in rest initially and then it is subjected to the force ft the nature of the force is a harmonic excitation so ft is equal to 10 sin 2t the other data that are necessary here is given below c is 500 newton second per meter that is the damping uh, constant and then k is 2500 newton per meter mass of this uh, system m is 100 kg of course we have divided the excitation by mass uh, so here the the system equation is represented in acceleration unit then j, uh, j that is the damping properties damping uh, ratio is given as 0.5 okay so let us solve this problem using the laplace transform so given the equation we now write the variables that is here c is 5 uh, c is whatever we have given here c value is 500 and k value is 2500 and m value is 100 and we divide throughout by 100 and then we get x double dot plus 5 x dot plus 25 x equal to 0.1 into sin 2t because our excitation was 10 and we divided it by 100 so it becomes 0.1 so we have to solve it by laplace transform so that is the requirement of this problem and so first we will take the laplace transform of both sides of the equation term by term so term by term uh, laplace transform was taken 
Laplace transform of x is simply x s where x s is actually the transfer function. Laplace transform of the first derivative of x is equal to s x s minus x 0 small x 0 that is the initial condition initial displacement at t is equal to 0. Laplace transform of the second derivative is s square x capital X s minus s x initial displacement minus initial velocity that is x dot at 0. So, we get all the Laplace transform that is necessary for the derivative and this function. Okay. So, Laplace transform of F t that is the exciting force is again say F s. Okay. So, we now write the differential equation in Laplace domain. So, first you substitute here and uh, we know that uh, this, uh, this s and x 0 the initial velocity is 0. So, s multiplied by 0. Similarly, we know that initial displacement is 0. So, that uh, this term is also 0. So, first term uh, Laplace transform has been written second term you see that 5 into s x s minus 0 plus 25 x s equal to 0 0.1 Laplace transform of sin 2 t is 2 divided by s square by s square plus 4. So, that Laplace transform of the harmonic function we have derived uh, in the earlier slides and then uh, table is also supplied. So, you can write the Laplace transform of the excitation as 0 0.1 into 2 divided by s square plus 4. Okay. Now, our intention is to go get this uh, transform function x s. So, after simplifying we now get x s equal to 0 0.2 s square plus 4 and this quantity will come from here s square plus 5 s plus 25. So, this is the transfer function we get directly after Laplace transform, but we require the inverse transform so that we can get the response of the system x as a function of t. Okay. To get this we have to obtain the Laplace transform of this function which is 0 0.2 divided by s square plus 4 into s square plus 5 s plus 25. Now, using the partial fraction method, we now get this uh, fraction as 0 0.2 divided by s square plus 4 into s square plus 5 s plus 25 and we can write it as equal to a into s plus b divided by s square plus 4 plus c into s plus d divided by s square plus 5 s plus 25 after simplifying and equating the coefficient of the like terms we now get a is equal to minus 1.848 into 10 to the power minus 3 b is 7.763 into 10 to the power minus 3 c is 1.848 into 10 to the power minus 3 d is 1.479 into 10 to the power minus 3 ok. So, we get this now we write this function as inverse transform that have to be obtained for the function of this. So, it is a into s divided by this plus b divided by this. So, b is this quantity and this is we have uh, for mathematical uh, simplicity or for using the Laplace transform or inverse transform of the standard function we divided it by 2 and we place here 2 so that equality remains. Then Laplace transform of C s divided by this so it is written and uh, here also we write this into this uh, square so that we get this uh, denominator as s square plus 5 s plus 2.5 square. Uh, the intention is that this thing has to be brought here. So, additional term that is required we write here 4.33 square. Okay. So, the additional term that is written 
is again have to be subtracted. So, we use this minus of this 2.5 into 1.848 into 10 to the power minus 3 and this is you can see here the equality now remains. Now, using the standard table now we get say this Laplace transform of S divided by S square plus 2 square is nothing but cos of 2t here 2 is the uh, the frequency driving frequency. So, it immediately becomes say minus 1.848 into 10 to the power minus 3 into cos 2t plus this function we simplify and we write here 3.8815 into 10 to the power minus 3 and Laplace transform of this is nothing but sin 2t plus now we go here and we can see that Laplace transform of such a thing will appear with a exponential multiplier. So, here you can easily see that the exponential term e to the power minus 2.5 t will come because we have earlier noted while uh, the carrying out the Laplace transform of e to the power a t into f t we found that this term will come and this cosine of this 4.33. So, this is the frequency okay, of the excitation cos and uh, similarly the other term that is subtracted will have the Laplace inverse transform as minus 0 0.7254 into 10 to the power minus 3 e to the power minus 2.5 t sin 4.333. Okay. You can see here this represents the driving uh, natural frequency of the system because your this uh, according to this uh, formulation whatever we found uh, we find that the, the stiffness is given let us see the stiffness uh, the stiffness is 2500 and mass is 100 so k by m will be omega n square and therefore omega n that is the natural frequency we get as uh, a 5 Okay, natural frequency is 5, but you can see here none of the expression contains 5. Okay, none of the expression contains 5. So, why it is? Because the initial transient uh, response should uh, take part or with the natural frequency of the system but natural frequency of the system that is the 5 radian per second square per second is not appearing here. This is for the reason that the system is having damping and due to damping the natural frequency of the damp system now is reduced and natural frequency of the damp system you know the formula omega d equal to omega n root over 1 minus j square. So, you substitute j is 0.5 so, root over 1 minus 0 0.5 square into 5 will give you 4.33. So, you can easily note that this two term represents the free vibration part and this two term will represent the steady state motion. So, these two are for free vibration part that is the transient response and here you will get this uh, the steady state part that takes a part same as the diving frequency. Now, if I want to show you the effect of frequency on the response, let us show a graphical representation of the response. Okay. So, in this figure you can see there are three curves, one is with blue color and another is with red and the third one is with yellow. Okay. You can see the blue color is for natural frequency 2 radian per second that is the driving frequency. So, when the system is excited with the driving frequency you can see the steady state motion, steady state motion and amplitude you can note from this graph. Okay. But then we increase the frequency, Okay, increase the frequency to 3 radian per second you will find the the uh, magnitude increases that will show you the rising trend of this uh, this frequency response for uh, the frequency diving frequency 
to a frequency up to the this damped natural frequency. So, here this uh, omega that is 3.5355 that is equal to the uh, resonant frequency. Now, question arises what will be the resonant frequency for a damped system? For a damped system, resonant does not occur at the frequency ratio 1 that is obvious. It occurs at the frequency ratio root over 1 minus 2 j square. You remember this that I have explained with derivation in my previous lecture. So, therefore, this frequency that I have written here 3.5355 radian per second is the frequency that is equal to omega n root over 1 minus 2 j square where omega n is your natural frequency that is root over k by m. Now, you can see here at resonance the amplitude is the highest, but it is still limited because of the presence of damping. So, presence of damping in the steady state part you will get that the response is limited to a finite number. However, if the damping is 0 or uh, very small you will get the large amplitude, but in this problem the damping ratio is considerably high that is we have taken 0.5 just to illustrate this. So, we have got this damp the resonant amplitude is much higher than the amplitude at other frequencies and resonant frequency here is 3.5355 which occurs at omega n into root over 1 minus 2 j square. It is not equal to not occurs it does not occur at omega is equal to omega n remember this very carefully. Okay. Now, let us see the second example, a system with um, stiffness and damping is excited by a step load that is started at t is equal to t naught and therefore, the function is written here is 1 if t is greater than or equal to t naught and 0 otherwise you can see. So, let us find the response by Laplace transform technique. So, if this is the differential equation and V is the response that is the displacement here, then taking Laplace transform of both sides again we get this s square plus 2 j omega n s plus omega n square this is the coefficient and V s is the transfer function that have to be evaluated and time function that is u t that is Laplace transform is written as capital U s and you know that the Laplace transform of the step function very well and uh, it is given in the my chart. So, V s the transfer function is now 1 by m divided by s square plus 2 j omega n s plus omega n square multiplied by u s. So, you can see the transfer function is written as the product of two function in the variable s one is g s another is u s and u s you can see that is the Laplace transform of the step function ok. And uh, therefore, the unit step response can be obtained by inverse transform of that function and you know when the product of two functions are considered the inverse transform is generally this convolution integral. So, by convolution integral concept we get the response as 1 by omega d e to the power minus j omega n t sin omega d t. So, by Laplace transform technique that step function response is obtained ok. So, this is the convolution integral now we have to carry out and uh, u t is equal to 1 as it turns on at tau is equal to 0 to solve it we replace the variable t minus tau with j so that d j equal to minus d tau. So, the inverse transform is taken by the convolution integral that is the main objective of this example and you can see this Laplace transform of this uh, transfer function is taken from the convolution theory. So, using the convolution integral and the integrating by parts we now get this v t this is the response of the system subjected to step function which started commenced at 
t is equal to t naught is given by 1 by m omega n square into 1 minus e to the power j omega n t into cos omega d t plus j omega n divided by omega d sin omega d t ok. So, this is the method that you can use for solving the problem uh, uh, converting first into Laplace domain and then taking the inverse transform ok. So, as t becomes large in this example, you can see that the response tends to be 1 by k which is static deflection of a mass restrained by a spring of constant k under unit load. For the case where the step is applied at t is equal to t naught, the Laplace transform is of u t minus t naught is given by this. So, this integral has to be used integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus st u into uh, u is a function of t naught because the unit step function is applied at t naught and this value is e to the power minus s e to the power minus s t naught divided by s. So, that the response now becomes the inverse transform of this function. Then proceed above to find the response. Now, we will discuss the another transform technique that is known as Fourier transform. As per definition of Fourier transform, we write the integral f omega which is the conversion of time function into frequency function and the integral is given by f omega equal to 1 by 2 pi. Uh, limit of the integral is minus infinity to plus infinity f t is a time function e to the power i omega t d t. Now, here f t is a piecewise continuous in every finite interval and has left and right hand derivative at every point. So, that is the requirement and f t is also absolutely integral such that the integral of the function mod f t d t from the limit minus infinity to plus infinity is bounded and it is a finite number. Inverse transform Fourier transform is defined as f t equal to integral of minus uh, infinity to plus infinity of f omega into e to the power minus i omega t d omega. You can note here a factor 1 by 2 pi is used and inverse transform this factor is not used and here e to the power i omega t is given which is also a complex representation of the harmonic function. So, here also e to the power minus i omega t also a complex representation, but here you can see when the integration is carried out uh, with respect to variable t then it becomes a function of omega and here integration is to be carried out with respect to variable omega. So, it becomes a function of t ok. The scope of Fourier analysis can be extended to include singularity function also that does not uh, satisfy the sufficiency condition of the Fourier integral. However, it is very much used in mechanics problem. Such function is called the direct delta function and are found uh, in various applications in physics and in vibration and other mechanical problems. So, here the direct delta function is a delta t minus t naught it is defined as t is equal to t naught and it is multiplied by another function phi t and if the integration of this function is carried out if the integration of the function is carried out with limit minus infinity to plus infinity it becomes a function evaluated at t is equal to t naught. So, phi is equal to t naught. By definition Fourier transform of delta function is then f omega equal to 1 by 2 pi delta t into e to the power i omega t d t. So, here t naught is 0. So, therefore, the integral becomes simply 1 by 2 pi and by inverse transform we get the definition of delta function also. So, delta t is equal to 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus i omega t d omega. Here integration is carried out with omega 
and here integration is carried out with the variable t. Okay. Uh, in the linear dynamic problem, the harmonic transfer function is frequently used, which is defined by the ratio x t by f t, where f t is a pure harmonic function, is a cosine function or sine function. This is also known as frequency response function in literatures. Uh, by definition, the frequency response function can also be said to be the response of a single degree freedom linear system subjected to a harmonic input of frequency omega and amplitude 1, unit amplitude. Okay. Now, let us see how the frequency response function or a transfer function can be obtained. As we have told that excitation is with the frequency omega harmonic uh, excitation and amplitude 1. So, we write it using the complex number f t is equal to 1 into e to the power i omega t. And therefore, the response of the linear system is assumed as h omega into e to the power i omega t. Substituting this in the differential equation m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f t, we can extract the harmonic transfer function or a frequency response function h omega. So, h omega now becomes 1 divided by k minus m omega square plus i c omega and you can see this is a complex uh, number. So, generally sometimes it is also known as complex frequency response function. The modulus of the complex frequency response function is given by 1 divided by k minus m omega square whole square plus c omega square. Okay. Using superposition, then one can say that excitation of f omega e omega i omega t because earlier we have used the excitation of 1 amplitude 1 or it is a constant say uh, any constant amplitude. Now, here if the amplitude is f omega and uh, the frequency is omega, then according to linear theory it will induce a response of h omega f omega e to the power i omega t. So, time history of input now will be f t integration of f omega e to the power minus i omega t d omega that is the inverse Fourier transform of this excitation. So, the Fourier transform of this function that is Fourier transform of this function will give you the, the time history of the response. So, time history of the response x t is equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity h omega f omega e to the power minus i omega t d omega. Comparing the above equation with standard inverse Fourier transform say x t is equal to x omega e to the power minus i omega t d omega we can now say that x omega equal to h omega into f omega. So, frequency domain input output relationship is given by this and we use this in linear dynamics. Okay. Relationship between the harmonic transfer function and impulse response function. It can be easily said that impulse response function has some intimate relationship with the frequency response function. How it is related let us see we use harmonic input f t is equal to e to the power i omega t then x t that is by convolution integral we get f t minus tau into h tau d tau and limit of integral is minus infinity to plus infinity and it becomes after substituting this excitation as e to the power i omega t we now get this integral. Okay. So, here e to the power i omega t is taken out and this integral has to be carried out e to the power minus i omega tau h tau d tau and the limit of integration is minus infinity to plus infinity. The fact that response x t is h omega e to the power i omega t and from definition of harmonic function it shows that h omega is exactly 2 pi times the Fourier transform of h t. Okay. 
Now let us see one example. Uh, here we are uh, required to find the harmonic transfer function for linear system governed by the differential equation c x dot plus k x. So, here a first order equation is taken in which the impulse response function is given by h t equal to 1 by c e to the power minus k t by c it is a step function. By definition of harmonic transfer function h omega is equal to 2 i spy a Fourier transform of the time function. So, Fourier transform of the time function by definition is h t e to the power i omega t d t and 1 by 2 pi term was there, but it was cancelled with another 2 pi factor. So, this integral is carried out here you can see the step by step procedure for carrying out the integration and finally, we get the transfer function of such system after integration and putting the limit 0 to infinity. Why we uh, did not use the minus infinity? Because the function is defined only for the time greater than 0. So, therefore, we exclude this uh, lower limit minus infinity and then we started the uh, integration with lower limit as 0. So, transfer function for such system the first order system is obtained as h omega equal to 1 divided by k i c omega. So, this is the standard transfer function of the this first order system. Okay. Now, let us see another example two harmonic motions of the same amplitude, but of slightly different frequencies are imposed on a vibrating body. So, let us analyze the motion. So, x 1 is a cos omega t and x 2 is a cos omega plus del omega t. Frequency is slightly differing. So, del omega is a small quantity. The motion of the body is then found by superposition. So, x is equal to x 1 plus x 2 and then we can see that uh, after substituting it becomes x is equal to a cos omega t plus a cos omega plus del omega t and use the trigonometrical identity cos alpha plus cos beta is equal to 2 cos alpha plus beta by 2 cos alpha minus beta by 2. Hence, we can write x t is equal to a 2 cos half omega t plus omega t plus del omega t into cos del omega by 2 into t. On simplification, we get x t is equal to 2 a cos del omega by 2 into t cos omega plus del omega by 2 into t. You can see here the amplitude now is a function of t. So, if I represent such uh, response with a curve, then you will see the amplitude builds up and it becomes maximum 2 a and therefore, the amplitude varies from 0 to 2 a as per the first term of this equation. Okay. And then uh, the bit period that is phenomenon this type of oscillation is known as bit oscillation or bit phenomenon. And here we can see the bit frequency is del omega by 2 pi and amplitude is 2 a that means bit period is 2 pi by del omega. Okay. So, let us summarize this today's lecture. In this lecture the transform technique for solving the dynamic equation was mainly discussed. Laplace transform was first introduced and different properties are explained. Laplace transform was then uh, used to solve some problems uh, with a harmonic excitation and step excitation. Then we go to the Fourier uh, techniques and the Fourier transform is defined. Transfer function was derived and the input output relationship of the linear dynamic problem was stated. Then we uh, solve two examples uh, of the dynamic system using the transfer function. Thank you very much.